So Socrates never wrote anything down. Socrates didn't think of himself as wise. Socrates didn't think of himself as a as a teacher. And yet he is the father of philosophy. You know, what the heck? What Socrates did give us is the Socratic method. This is the method we will be using over the course of the semester. It starts with posing a question, okay? So someone poses a question. Somebody presents a problem. What is justice? This is actually a conversation we think Socrates had. What is justice? He says, so, my friends, tell me, what is justice? Someone offers an answer. Justice is repaying one's debts. Okay? Justice is repaying one's debts. All righty. Socrates stops. He considers the answer. And then he thinks and he says, hmm. Well, consider this case. Consider the scenario where a f- you have borrowed a weapon from a friend and the friend goes quite mad and r- demands the weapon back from you so he can hurt himself or he can hurt someone else. Okay. So you have a situation here where justice, if justice is repaying one's debt, it would seem the just thing to do would return the weapon to the friend. But is it really just to give your friend a weapon that you know he's going to use to do harm to himself or to someone else? And he's confronted with the idea that that just does not seem just. It does not seem just to repay one's debts by giving returning a weapon that is going to be used to harm your friend. Well, the answer says it's just to give the weapon back. He says reason, perhaps even common sense, tells us it's not just to give the weapon back. We have a problem. We have a counterexample to your definition, so the definition must fail. So would returning a weapon to a friend to hurt himself be just? The answer seems no. So our defense, our, our, you know, our example, our definition here must fail. And we repeat. Okay. This is the Socratic method. The Socratic method is we are presented with a problem. We offer an answer. We examine the answer. And it's not uncommon for us to find exceptions, find problems with the answer. The questions we're going to be looking at are hard questions. If they were easy questions, then we wouldn't be looking at them. This is what we're going to do throughout the course of the semester. We're going to offer up a question. Does free will exist? We're going to get an answer. No, everything is determined. We're going to examine that answer. Okay, this is what we're going to do over the course of the semester. Now, the biggest complaint I get from my introductory students is that when they're doing philosophy, they're reading the book, they're listening to the lectures, it just goes back and forth. It just goes back and forth. Yes, it goes back and forth. That's exactly right. Because it's a dialogue. That's the Socratic method. The Socratic method is a dialogue pose a question, offer an answer, offer an objection. That's the Socratic method. That's the dialogue we are going to be engaging in over the course of the next who knows how many weeks. So that is what we are doing. And when you are reading and you feel like, but they're just going back and forth and they're contradicting themselves, remember the dialogue, remember the Socratic method. What's the problem? What's the answer? What's the objection? And then it's going to repeat. The Socratic method has a purpose. It's what we use throughout the course of the class. It's what we use in philosophy. It's meant to show the value of critical 
of critically examining ideas. It's meant to show that looking at these things, thinking about them, questioning them is valuable. The Socratic method almost always results in a reductio ad absurdum argument. A reductio ad absurdum argument, we're going to see it several times throughout the semester, is an argument where we assume, for the sake of argument, our opponent's view. We examine that view, finding it results in a contradiction. And when a contradiction is made true by a claim, that claim must be false. Okay? So a reductio ad absurdum argument is where we assume an opponent's view is correct. So Socrates says, okay, well, let's consider that justice is repaying one's debts. Okay, let's assume for the sake of argument that's true. We show that a contradiction follows. Okay, so, well, if justice is repaying one's debts, I have the situation where returning the weapon would be just, but returning the weapon is also not just. I have a contradiction. There are many, many things I'd like you to get out of this class. There are many, many, many things I truly hope that you leave this class with an understanding and knowledge of. But if there is only one thing that you leave this class with, if there is only one thing you get out of this class, I want it to be this. Contradictions can never be true. Contradictions can never be true. You cannot have something that is read all over and not read all over. Okay? A ball cannot be read all over and not read all over. You cannot have a round square. In other words, you cannot have a figure that has four equal sides meeting at four interior right angles and every point on the perimeter of that figure be equidistant from the center. You can't do it. It's a contradiction, and contradictions can never be true. Okay? So we've assumed our opponent's view viewpoint. We've discovered that that viewpoint results in a contradiction. Contradictions can never be true. Thus, the opponent's view must be false. Does that make sense? The opponent's view must be false. So that is what we're going to see. That's what we're going to do over the course of the semester is we are going to look at this Socratic method and we're going to determine, you know, we're going to use it to determine if answers are good answers. Does that make sense? All right. The virtue of these recorded lectures is that you get to stop and rewind and re-listen, okay? So if there's anything in any of these recordings that you have not understood, that you're not clear about, that aren't matching your concepts list, please go back and re-listen to it. And then if you are still confused, please, please, please send me an email, okay? I'm here to help you. Please just remember that you have to sign your email or I will not respond to you. All right, everybody have a great week.